Good morning. Today we're going to look at the final installment in our look in the Apostles' Creed and looking at the particular verse, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Now the part I want to talk about today uh, is the implications of what this means as God is our creator. And then, you know, how do, what are we supposed to do with that? Uh, and, and so I want to look, first of all, at the biggest implication. If God is the creator, that means he owns everything. Psalm 24, 1 says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And then Psalm 100 says, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And see, it's amazing, isn't it, that God is this owner. He owns everything. He's created all things. Everything is his. There's nothing that creation in creation that he doesn't own and doesn't touch. Our God is a God of power and of grace. And we should be thinking about that. The biggest implication, if God is the owner of all things, it means everything is his. Now, can we as people misuse his things? Absolutely. We do it all the time. But everything is his. And so he, at some point, and one of the other implications is, is one day he's going to redeem it all. And that's the glorious great news of our coming what we call glorification in heaven. It is astounding to me just how tremendous this whole concept is. And so we have an exhortation as creation. First of all, since God created the world, let us wisely observe the works of creation. God has given us so many different things. He gave us his word. He allows us to read and to know him through his scripture. But he also allows us to know him through creation. So enjoy the beauty around you. We have been stunned uh, moving here in just the last month. We have been stunned by the beauty of this area. It is gorgeous and it is so amazing when you start to see with new eyes uh, a new area and just are astounded by God's creation because if we look around us we see the glory of the Lord and God's Word says over and over the heavens are his the heavens are his creation the seas are his and they show us the wonders of the deep I wake up in the morning and you hear the birds singing and you realize this is a choir singing glory to God. We have the beauty of everything around us and then we have the beauty of how God has made us to be creative as well. The first question in the Shorter Catechism says what is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. We glorify God through our enjoyment of Him and His creation. And it's amazing the different things that we can enjoy and learn as we appreciate all that's around us. There was once a violin virtuoso named Joshua Bell. He's one of the finest classical musicians in the entire world. And he was hired to do several classical masterpieces at, at the metro station in Washington, D.C. during morning rush hour. Now, three days prior to his time in the Metro, Bell had filled Boston's prestigious Symphony Hall, where the average seat at that time sold for over $100. And as he performed with the same fervor on his handcrafted 1713 Stradivari, for nearly an hour in that Metro station, he took in a total of $32 and change from the 27 people out of the thousands going through that metro station who noticed him. Other thousands of people had hurried by hearing this grand master playing basically for free for them. They completely ignored it. And he said, there was never a crowd, not even for a second. Now, if we're going to truly enjoy his creation, it means we have to take that second back and breathe it in and breathe it in deeply. Look around you 
It's everywhere. Whether it is in the beauty of creation, the trees, the grass, the birds, the animals, whether it is in the creation that we are created to be uh, these creative beings, and in art, and in music, and in literature, all of these great things that God has put before us, He's a creator. He's made us to be creative. Flannery O'Connor said this, he says, All human nature vigorously resists grace because grace changes us and the change is painful. He says, but then he goes on, she goes on, she goes on, excuse me. There are indeed times when God woos us slowly with beauty and grace and grandeur, moving among us in a manner that busy or critical lives readily miss while focusing elsewhere. Other times it is we who find ourselves moved nearly to blindness as we labor to take in the glory in a startling moment like Moses had or Isaiah had when they were presented with God or like the commuters in the metro station oblivious to the works of arts before us. Our strange faces miss the signs of, many, of a many-splendored God entirely. But other times we labor intentionally to see with good eyes and we find the world around us transformed with the splendor of the one who called the world good. Since God has created all things, let us enjoy our maker. Let us enjoy his creation. We are His by right of creation. We owe ourselves to Him. And if He says, go and enjoy me, who are we to deny this? God has made everything for His glory, but He's made it for us as well. He's made the food that we eat, the beasts of the world that, that we find useful, the birds for music, so that we can serve God. God makes us all, and He is to be glorified and enjoyed forever. So I encourage you, please, enjoy this creation God has made. Enjoy Him, for He is good, and He is wonderful, and He has made you not only to just be of service, but to enjoy every aspect of life that he has given unto us. Amen and amen. We'll see you guys next week.